Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sunday's live stream. Don't, accept, don't adjust your monitors. I am in the pool, and the reason for that is I have a herniated or ruptured disc, which means that uh, I cannot stand for more than 20 minutes without excruciating pain, nor can I sit down. So the best way to do this is uh, within the pool where I'm pretty much weightless and I can talk to you. So first of all, everybody, thanks for stopping by on a Sunday. I understand that there is a big game where the Cowboys will at some point beat the Eagles, but uh, let's see if we can run through this uh, rather quickly. And before we get going, let me make sure that the uh, audio is okay because we are using this uh, uh, newish mic. And I just want to make sure. So if uh, audio is good and I don't see anything in the comments, I think we'll be fine. If so, let's just get into it. So the title was Lump Sum versus DCA. And is it a good idea to go all in? And in all honesty, if we think about it, the best time to go all in would have been at the absolute bottom, right? Well, I don't have a, a crystal ball. I know a lot of people you don't either. So when we talk about these, uh, these bottoms and, and trying to time everything, this is why I dollar cost average. However, if we take a look at just how things are going as far as the market itself, the, this is what we're doing every Sunday. And I wanted to put a little spin on this to see if my dollar cost averaging ways of doing things would hold up against a, a lump sum strategy. So what I want to do here real quick is uh, actually I want to change this from 2019 to 2023. And I want to go from, we started this in September 1st or so. And just so everybody knows, this is what I am currently uh, dollar cost averaging. Now, some of these I'm dollar cost averaging every day, some of them every week. And uh, of course, varying different uh, monetary amounts. But uh, so far, if we would have started in September 1st, we would have been up, up pretty well, actually. We would have beat every treasury and bond out there. I'll tell you that right now. Even Dogecoin up 10%, E13. And of course, these are the ones that I'm buying, Doge, ETH, DOT, Adam, Algo, Matic, Bitcoin, Arbitrum, ADA, Cardano, Chainlink, and Solana. Solana being uh, the big winner right now. And that, of course, is just dollar cost averaging. And this is doing something very simple, which is just $10 a day. If you can afford that, maybe $10 a week, I don't know, or, you know, whoever you are, maybe $10,000 per day. It, there's, there's varying people out there. So uh, it really doesn't matter um, how you do this. Percentages are percentages, and those are gains are gains. But the question then is, well, if I'm dollar cost averaging and trying to be safe as much as I possibly can, well, how does this work out? How would this look if we go back? What I want to do is I want to go back and take a look at how this would be as far as in the cycle. So we're a big believer here in the four-year cycles. And we know that we are on a pre-halving year. The last pre-halving year was in 2019. So let's just back this up to 2019, September 1st. And the big thing, of course, we look at this, and if we would have dollar cost average, we've been done pretty good, right? I mean, we'd have dollar cost average, and if we would have sold at the right time, not too bad. But if we'd done all this and dollar cost average and sold it, let's just pick a date. May 30th, 2021. It's not a bad day. It's not the April blow off top. It's not the November blow off top. We'll say May 30th or something like that. And you're going to see that if we went back and we would invested $6,380. That's what it's saying here. Whoops. May 30th or so. $6,380. Look at the uh, massive gains. So again, there's a... There's a a tagline I use, we use a lot here, which is time in the market is more important than timing the market. And that's important to know. And it's great when we're talking about buying, but for selling, I think it's totally false. I just do. And you can see right here that even though that we've done pretty well here, it would all would have depend that have been would have been dependent on if we would have made the smart decision, pulled the trigger, and sold, right? Because, I mean, Doge, putting up $6,000 to get 590000 is pretty good. Matic, putting in six grand and getting out five, half a million, over half a million, pretty good. Cardano, one of my favorites, 139000 And, of course, you can see, I don't need to read this to you. These are pretty fantastic gains. So remember these numbers real quick. Doge, 590000 Matic, 564000 And let's just go to Solana, 70000 right? That's going from... A time frame of 2019, September 1st to May 30th. Now what I want to do is this. Again, thinking about cycles. Let's click on this lump sum. And now just so everybody knows, 
what I'm showing you here, of course, is in Ben's site. There's a link in the description. You can sign up for this stuff. It's free. Let's take that $6,300, whatever it was. And let's say we threw it all in, in in 2019, September 1st. And then we waited till May 30th. So if we would have lump summed everything in, come on. We have been far ahead. Matic, almost a million. Doge, three quarters of a million. Ada went from 172.23. Solana would have doubled. Blank so on and so forth. Bitcoin, not too much. Near 16 and algo and so on and so forth. So when we take a look at these things, a lot of people or some people will say, well, if you just lump sum and put it all in, that's what you have to do. It's a risky play. But maybe if you think about it like this, as we move forward, what would be a good time? Well, if this is September. Let's just do this, actually. Let's take a today's date. Let's take November November 5th, 2019. Exactly. Is it the 5th? 5th or the 6th, right? Yeah, the 5th. And we threw in $6,300. And we went to May 30th. Burp, 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 burp. You know, a couple months later, eh, whatever. Again, still pretty good. And we still beat the DCA, Matic, Ada, so on and so on and so forth. So would this be something that uh, you could look at and do? Yeah, potentially. I'm just showing you what it is and what it potentially could be. But I got to tell you, every day that uh, when you're in the bear or the bull market, these types of days, they seem like nothing can go wrong and everything will go up. And it could be that way, in all honesty. But you have to think to yourself, do I want to go all in? And that's something you have to decide for yourself. I will say this. There's dollar cost averaging. There's lump sum where you can do what's called value cost averaging. I think that at some point, maybe it might not be a bad idea for me to put a big chunk down. But that's for me to do. I can't tell you to do. I'm not a financial advisor. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And again, this time in the market is more important than timing the market. This all works out and it's predicated on the fact that we sell at the right point. Because even if we lump sum $6,300 into Bitcoin, all these different ones, all the way back in 2019, instead of having this much left over, you know what we have right now today? We're still up, but it's roughly 40%, 30% of what the original amount, and actually in some, we're actually in the negative. So we can hold all this time, but for me, that's not a good option. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comments. And then also, I want to run this by everybody as preparation. Because if we look at it like this, we're talking about ETFs. What if it isn't approved? And I got to tell you, uh, it's something that I've been thinking about for quite some time. Do I think it, it matters? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But this was from a couple of different people around that are in the in the trenches dealing with crypto and assets and institutional investors and things like that, what, what they think could actually happen. So let's just say the Bitcoin spot ETF is not approved. Here's what we got. So this is from uh, Laurent Kisses. She's a, tra a trading advisor at CEC Capital. And she says, uh, we could see a move downward and talk, the target could be below $30,000. Also, she says a, a cluster at 25 grand is highly unlikely unless the SEC is categorical, but I sense it'll be a back to the drawing board situation and hope will still be in the back of everyone's mind. If the ETF doesn't get approved, I anticipate it'll be a significant letdown, says Martin Lineweber, product strategist for market vector indexes. Spot ETF is often viewed as a hallmark of institutional acceptance and integration into mainstream financial systems. And a rejection might also trigger some legal turmoil for the SEC. So that's a lot to break down. Here's what it is. Everybody is so convinced that this ETF is, gonna, is going to happen. Man, I hope it does, because that would be fantastic for everybody. But what if it doesn't? We can't control the events. We can only control our reaction to the event. And I've made my thoughts clear of why it could or could not be uh, approved. I know people don't like to hear it, but uh, here it goes again. I still think that uh, Gary Gensler works for the White House, 
I still think that he is uh, not very accepting of, of certain assets. And uh, I think it's, I mean, if you think about it, it's not in the American government's best interest to approve a Bitcoin ETF and have institutions flow in because that's just one more place the dollar can actually go into. I think maybe it's a stall tactic for a CBDC. These are just conspiracy theories, but who knows? And uh, as time has gone on and Gary Gens on the SEC has lost case after case after case from grayscale to ripple, it seems more and more likely. But I'm just telling you, I think at some, some point you have to consider what it could happen. And if it doesn't, it's not going to be the end of the world. I just like this last, this second to last phrase from Martin. He says, the spot ETF is often viewed as a hallmark of institutional acceptance and integration into mainstream financial systems. I think he's, he's right if he would have said the ETF is viewed as a hallmark of institutional acceptance. It's actually viewed as a is acceptance in the financial system if the SEC approves it. As far as institutional acceptance, can you get any bigger than Fidelity and BlackRock and ARK and Van Eck and everybody else that's, that's involved with it? I don't think you really can. I think institutional acceptance is already here. So the only thing that I think is positive for the ETF is, of course, this will bring in, some people say this will bring in massive amounts of money. Some people think it's a, uh, it may not be the tidal wave that everybody's expecting. I think it could be a huge tidal wave if it does get actually approved. But the thing that you have to remember is with these or with this ETF, as it comes in, things just might not go according to plan. And you might have a little bit of issues and bumps along the way. But the big thing, I think, again, is that the public perception has changed because right now, Besides us, the people who are here right now, and don't let anybody tell you that you're not, you're super early to this, this space. There's still a large percentage of the population globally that take a look at crypto and they see it, they see crypto as FTX. They see crypto as Celsius. They see crypto as Voyager. They see crypto as BlockFi. They see crypto as just Ponzi schemes and charlatans and scams running amok, which let's be honest, uh, it's not like we are squeaky clean in this, in this category. But if we have the SEC give the approval, that means the average Joe and Jane can say, yep, I think this is actually pretty good. So I think it'll be, whether it gets approved or not, it doesn't really matter in the long run. I just, uh, we'll see how it all works out from there. I don't care if it gets approved or not. I think that uh, the next bull run will be massive. Anyhow, what you think about that in the comments? And just to finish up a little, little PSA, is uh, if you own a uh, near wallet, and this is wallet.near.org, just so everybody knows, uh, as of January 21st or January 1st, 2024, the near wallet will be discontinued. No changes are made to your account or assets. Use your recovery phrase or transfer wizard to securely migrate to a different wallet. I've got a whopping $165 in this, in this specific wallet to show everybody, but you need to do that before... Well, you should do it for January 1st, 2024. And uh, this is why near wallet made a browser wall until January 1st. Don't worry if you haven't transferred by January 1st, the transfer visit will still be available after the wallet functionality sunsets, which I think is pretty cool. And then of course it comes over to here and they're just trying to just make it uh, easier for integration and things like that with the with near protocol. But I just want to talk to you real quick about near. Do you know that near? I mean, everybody's been talking about Solana, how great it is, which it is. And the reason why I say it is because I own it. And of course, I'm super biased. But, uh, you know, in the last seven days, Nier's up, or excuse me, Solana's up 24, almost 25% in seven days. But out of the top 40, yeah, uh, Nier Protocol is up the most, 30, almost 32%. And the question you have to ask yourself is why, why Nier? Why is that so big? Just because Rob's talking about it? Uh, no, it's not. It's actually, uh, it's actually pretty good tech. I don't know if you know this, but, uh, near itself. And again, I'm biased. I own a bunch of this stuff. Near has a uh, hundred thousand TPS, which beats Polygon and Solana. Now I know with fire dancer coming out with Solana, they're, they're claiming that it could be up to 1.2 million TPS. And, uh, that is, uh, what they said that it can be proved. We'll see, but, uh, still near is not doing too bad.
as a compose as opposed to like uh, Arbitrum forty thousand, pretty good. BNB ten, Cosmo six, Tron two thousand, and Cardano two fifty. Hopefully they get uh, something else moving out there. And this was updated February twenty first, twenty twenty three. So sound off in the comment section for your favorite crypto, <laughs> because I definitely will get that. Which is, Rob, you understand because. XYZ does this much TPS and da da da. I'm like, okay, great. But again, TPS isn't the whole story. What you really want to take a look at is, first of all, TBL. And we talked about this many times. There's a link in the description for DeFi Llama. It's a 100% free website. You can check it out. But I like Near. It's got great tech. It does sharding right now, which is what Ethereum is, is, is aspiring to be. And they've already been doing it for over a year. Very fast, very cheap. But you can see as far as TBL, this doesn't even exist. I mean, here's the big piece of the pie. You got Ethereum at 53, and we went over this yesterday, so I'm not going to do it. But to take a look at it, I think it's like 37. Yeah. Near as far as TVL is all the way behind Moonbeam, Ronin, Tezos, Algorand, Aptos, Phantom. You can see that. It's got 53 million locked up as far as TVL and 72.19 as far as stables. Not too great, to be honest with you. But we take a look at who's, you know, as far as like top dApps, there's a website. <laughs> DappRadar.com. And we take a look at Dapp Radar, and you can see as far as like unique active wallets and balance, if you take a look at those, the two top Dapps are Kai Ching and Sweat Economy, which I also talk a lot about as far as Sweat, not Kai Ching. And they're both built on Near. So there's a lot of activity, and it's actually beat out as far as like Pancake Swap V3, uh, Galaxy, I don't know which one that was, Pancake Swap V2, and their decks. Splinter Lands, a game, and so on and so forth. But you can see it as far as like the balance that's locked up in there. I mean, Sweat Economy is 153 million. Pancake Swap, 280 million. Unique Active Wallet users. Kai Ching is 680,000. Sweat Economy, 140,000. Pancake, 70. Alien Worlds being on BNB channel. So you can see that's actually being used. And that's that's the big thing. That's really what I care about. But the thing that you have to, I always take a look at is the fees. Because I always talk about, you know, if you're going to vote, it's not just about TPS. It's about, are you voting with your pocketbook? And if we take a look here for crypto fees, you will notice that near isn't even in the top 20. I have to click on this. There it is. Near protocol is just right after hot protocol. So over seven days, you know, Ethereum over seven days make, geez Louise, they make 5 million, 109,000 in fees. Well, no wonders because they're super expensive. Bitcoin makes a ton, Uniswap right behind it. And then there's BNB. And Near Protocol makes a measly 3,000. And you can just see over here as far as more details. So I know some people are screaming at the, at the screen right now and saying, but you understand because of course they make more money because they're more expensive and we want things to be super cheap, like Solana, which is like a fraction of a penny. I agree. But you really want to take a look at as far as like, as far as adoption, like I did this yesterday. I'll do it again today. Just back up. Take a look from here and see how are things going. Well, not that great, honestly. Near protocol in 2022 kind of topped out. They were making 76,000. And then over here, look at this 4,000, 2,000, 2,500. Not too many people. And just only recently has it reached up to like in the threes. So it's going in the right direction but it's not like it's a ton. But the question then is, well, how much does it cost? And you can take a look at nearblocks.io. That's uh, kind of like Etherscan, but of course for near. And you can see that the actual transaction fees, they're like fractions of a penny. So no wonder they don't make anything because it's super cheap and super fast. Again, 100,000 TPS. Let me just blow this up here. Transaction fee is, well, again, fractions of a penny. I think that's what people want. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you're a developer, or not a developer, if you're a business or if you're a consumer, what do you want? You want fast, you want it cheap, and you want it easy. And I think that's the new narrative. That should be the new narrative of the next bull run, but we'll see. Anyhow, that's it for today. So if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. If you got to take off, go watch that uh, Eagles game. Good luck.